Well, hey there, everybody. How's it going today? <laughs> well, it's Carpo again. I've actually made quite a few videos in the last couple days, and I realized I only do that when I'm inspired. It's been very difficult to be inspired lately. And uh, I've spent some time writing, some time thinking. But after spending a couple days in the woods, it kind of changed my perspective on things. And uh, so it. it you know, I've got a lot to talk about, I guess. I see that my, um, my orchids are sitting over here in the direct sunlight, and I thought I better move them out of direct sunlight. And I'm gonna put them down here to protect them. I know, this is no time for doing plants. It's a video time. But uh, I guess that goes along with uh, the video I made the other day about plants, I actually, brought home a few of these orchids and you can bring them back I have an orchid mix and some of the original soil from the woods <clears throat> but anyhow that's not really what I'm here to talk about or is it uh, you know I, I I look at a lot of metaphors in nature for example you know that small flower when I found it it's just a single leaf with a very small stem very delicate orchid on it and when I found, first found it, I thought, wow, this is rare. I've never seen one of these before. Then I continued looking, and I started seeing more. And by the time I had collected a few, there were dozens of them around the area. Now, it doesn't mean that they're everywhere else in the woods. But what it does mean is I could have tromped through that, those woods. And if I had been looking for a mushroom, let's say, I would have missed the flower. If I'd been looking for that flower, I may have missed the mushroom. And this is something I've thought about a lot. When I'm out in the woods hiking around, I'm always looking for natural products or new plants, new things to identify. I'm fascinated with the fungal kingdom. You know, fungi are just amazing to me. And uh, the funny thing is that if you're, for example, out looking for morel mushrooms, you might walk right past some wild ginger or perhaps some other uh, you know useful medicinal plant or a, even a valuable plant but you're looking for mushrooms and your mind is set on looking for those specific mushrooms you might even pass by a bunch of a different kind of mushroom because you are so set on it this applies to everything I've ever looked for in the woods. If I'm looking for raspberries or, or strawberries, then I'll, I might miss the, some of the inner foliage. If you're looking for berries, you're going to miss the greens. If you're looking for mushrooms, you're going to miss the berries, those kinds of things. And the reason I, I mention that is because I feel like this can be really a metaphor for our lives as a whole. That if you've got your mindset on one thing, that is what you're going to see. It's nothing new. I learned this when I was a roofer about, say, 20 years ago when I had one of my first construction jobs as a roofer. And I remember going around town with my friends after uh, at lunchtime and, and we were pointing out all the roofs. And I remember saying, you know, it's funny. As a roofer, we see all these roofs. We can tell those presidential shingles. Those are architectural. Those are, you know, three tab. Those are shake. Those are tile. But most people don't really pay attention to that, unless they're into architecture, in which case they might, but they'll see it differently. And as I was a carpenter for several years, I started noticing finished carpentry. Maybe I'd noticed staircases or brickwork, whatever it might be. And uh, I really carried this through my life, a realization that whatever you expose yourself to, whatever you're looking to see, you're going to find. And this goes into looking for negative bullshit in life. If you're constantly focused on what's wrong with the world, then you're going to see what's wrong with the world. And that's all you're going to see. Your mind isn't going to be programmed or set up to accept positive outlook on things. Now, I think this is crucial because, like I've said before, I've been stuck in a negative mindset at times in my life, especially when things aren't going well. And when I'm having a hard time, maybe when I'm financially strapped, which has happened plenty of times, or perhaps I have a physical ailment, which has also happened. I had severe sciatica for a long time, which really screwed me up, you know? I couldn't physically move, and that mentally screws with your head. And uh, so I started learning, of course, to look for the positive in things, you know? 
the gratitude. Okay, so I may not be able to stand up, but I can still walk, but I can still uh, think, right? Or, um, you know, perhaps I'm, like I said the other day, perhaps I'm in lockdown like everybody else, but at least I have a backyard. Those kinds of things. If you begin to see those flowers, then you overlook the fields of dirt. You know, it's, it's like in being in a desert. It just looks like a wasteland. But if you start walking over those dunes and looking closer, you'll see little plants, you'll see creatures, you'll realize that there is life there, that there is even awesomeness within the barren landscape, you know? And uh, maybe that's kind of like a, a I don't know, a, I guess people could look at it as the silver lining or the glass half full or positive thinking. What it really is is a way to train your brain to take things for what they are. That you can't change everything around you. And you can see beauty in the smallest things. It's like I said, even you may see the beauty in a flower, for example. But there's a snail right next to that flower and a rock next to that snail. All of these things, you know, it, it does no harm to see the positive. And there are a lot of folks who really believe that if they start to see goodness in the world or see positive in other people or other things, that it's somehow a weakness. That by doing that, they're, you know, opening themselves up to, uh, well, I don't want to be a weakling. I just have to look at everything as it all sucks, you know. Um, everybody's out to get you. Everybody wants to kill you, you know, that they're trying to kill off this group or that group. There is a lot of that going on in the world, but is that what we have to stick our necks out and look at? The media does not make it easy, okay? <laughs> the media makes it nearly impossible. You know, sometimes, more often than not, if I have an opinion politically or otherwise, there's always somebody who will say, oh, you watch too much TV or too much media. And the truth is, I don't. <laughs> I don't watch the news. Uh, I do read headlines. I like to know what's going on in the world, but... Um, I try to make my own assessment about it, and I realize the bad news sells, and therefore I don't wallow in it, you know, and dwell in it. Rather than looking over at a barren landscape, I'm looking for that flower. Because if I can immerse myself in a moment of beauty, it's not ignorance or uh, sticking your head in the sand. But rather, it's realizing that shit is the way it is, if you want to focus on that part of life, then that's your choice. And um, I would say that if a person is going to delve into the negatives of life, they should at least be willing to take action to change that was those things. In other words, if you're, say, um, really obsessed with political problems or really obsessed with environmentalism, hopefully you're not just shouting on YouTube or shouting on uh, Twitter, but you're actually trying to make a change somehow. Maybe, I mean, even if speaking is your way, like in my case, my words are what I have to offer. You know, I don't take a lot of action, but I don't have a big, strong motivation to move the world or to change the world. I kind of just... Uh, there are issues that need to be changed as a whole, but there are issues that are far too big for, big for me to want to tackle. And I also look at things a little bit differently. I see the flower even in the darkness, you know? I just close my eyes and look for that beauty because I'd rather live with a little bit of contentment than frustration. And it's really easy for people to look at the negative because that's all that's being presented to people. I don't know. Hopefully I made some sense here. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day.